as long as we don't get the W, then it doesn't matter what type of game I have. It doesn't matter if I had a career game, record setting game, it doesn't matter. If we don't come out the W, then it's pointless. <laughs> oh, man. As opposed to uh, the guy who throws him the passes that, hey, listen, as long as I put up my numbers and get that right. next guaranteed contract. But all right, let's get to our guy. He is the most passionate Vikings fan we know. You can follow him on Twitter at RandyVikes69. Nice. He is Randy in Cottage Grove. Randy, how are you coping today? Uh, numb. Just numb. It was because of the cold or emotionally numb? The cold, the, the yag, the result, all oh, of it. Oh. Yeah, sounds yeah. like you're not doing so hot. Man. Too much too much yag? Is that the problem? Because um... yeah, too, much, too much yag, not enough yag, who knows? Oh, boy. I could sometimes in that the best thing you can do is hair the dog. Mm. That mm. kegerator still flowing then with the yeg? That too. I got both. I got the other one fixed. Oh, the other one broke. That's That's not, you know, we were looking forward to a big tilt Thursday night. That does not going to matter anymore. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. The Vikings. I mean, let's let's listen. Okay, I know it's a. The Vikings uh, lost a game yesterday. They're they're one game back of the seven seed right now. Okay. The dud stable. Oh. <laughs> and that's all it is. It's all it is. Okay. Wow. Well, let, let, okay. should we just get to the dud yeah. stable? The whole here, I season guess? Is, right. is, 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 is the whole season is a is a is a loss. The whole uh, I don't care who who Zim is is dating. I don't care. Uh, are you? I just sounds hammered. Are you okay? Yeah. I haven't. St- I I didn't go to sleep last night at, yet. Today I, I mean, didn't. The, go the to game sleep. ended at like three o'clock. So I mean, okay, we we kept going about it and and figuring out who was to blame and figuring out a plan. We're we're going to work. I hope you can say the same, Ziggy. What, I don't what know are if you I would go going to work, to work today if I were you. I might just. Take we're it going to we're going to work fixing what's wrong. Yeah, figuring out what's oh. wrong and 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 <laughs> holding people to ta- to account. That's good to hold, hold them accountable. Start the thing, the stable uh, now. Yep. Oh, so, yeah, the yep. music, the, 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 music's, the, the music's playing. Going. Yeah. This All right, is this Randy, is... Uh, we... This is Randy in Cog <laughs> Grove. Right. Uh, just go. Yeah, fill back off. It should be a stud stable, but it's a it's a dud, another dud. And this is the worst dud because they lost to a loser. A team who had, literally hadn't won, win a game in about a year. Here's some duds. Ugh. All right, number one, first off, we're going to say Adam Thielen. So strap it on and, and suck it up. Get out there and, and play. This is a lot at stake now, and you get paid good money. to Throw a little throw a little icy hot and get out there. Wow. Uh, I mean, that was a pretty bad ankle sprain. I mean, it looked like he got really pretty good there. Tape it up, A.T. Number A.T. Thielen, tape it up. Uh, that's what I do. Number two, uh, uh, D- Daniel Hunter. Where the hell were what? you? Well, I didn't see you flying around at all. Uh, the whole game, you were, lo- you were we couldn't find you with a searchlight. You Randy, I'm thinking maybe we just maybe we should just do this tomorrow. Uh, num- and number <laughs> number number four, Dud, uh, is going to be. Uh, <clears throat> Number four dud is gonna is gonna be uh, the the number number four dud. Oh, he's gone. What? That didn't work out. Ah, oh, he's gone. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm I'm laughing, and I feel terrible laughing. But I hope someone checks on him. You know that did not that did not. Can I just broach a little? Can Can I just broach one small thing here? Sure. I, <sighs> I don't know the executive producers should have allowed him on our show today. I think you got to be aware of the fact that when he is... Um, I think I didn't do proper screening? Is that yeah, what you're Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we don't allow a lot of people on now. Very few people, very, very small group of people get on our shows. And uh, mm. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I just, I think we need to mm. vet him a little so, bit. So, so, so right. Phil flies halfway across the country. I drive into work and, and you can't even show your face. Oh, I'm coming in later. 
Oh, I'm okay. coming in later for some right. Unchained. Unch- I'm Got just, it. look, look, I am not casting aspersions here. I'm not trying to start a big Spurgeon, fight. Spurgeon. I'm just, <laughs> I am just trying to shoot her. I am just Granlin. I, all I want to say, Nino, all I want to say is, I, you know, I, mean, I think we allowed him on, I think we allowed him on the show, um, S-Faced, shall we say. I mean, listen, we don't have a huge staff here. We don't have call screeners. We're just, we're flying here, okay? We're, we're pumping content. Yeah. It's on Randy to be an adult and to have his act together on a Monday. All right? I Look, guys, I'm, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, no I'm curious. I, I do kind of want to know who was the super duper dud today, but I guess we'll, I guess we're just never going to know. We'll never know. Maybe he he'll was, tweet it. I wonder if he was coherent to actually watch the second half considering Daniil Hunter ended up on his duds table. I mean, Daniil Hunter should probably tape it up and put some icy hot on there too, man. I mean, come on. It's football here. All right. I, I'm with him on Adam Thielen. What's Adam Thielen doing there? Right? You're good enough yeah. to stand on the sidelines. You can't get out there as a decoy. All right, come on. It's Let's toughen up here. It's only ankle a high ankle sprain. sprain. High it's ankle sprain, dead. low ankle sprain, mid ankle sprain. I don't care. Season's on the line. Get out there. You guys want to do some bonus statements here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we we have to. Now. I got I got more I got more Viking stuff oh, yeah. too in the bag here. So I, do too, I mean, I know I'm the wild. The, you guys, well, you guys, you guys fed the wild beast. The wild best team in the NHL right now. I have a statement on it. You guys fed the beast. Let's all right, let's clear out the Vikings bag and then all right. go ahead, Jay. Right. You've got to be kidding me. That's my statement, and it's regarding the multiple changes made on the offensive line. Three fifths of your your offensive line in a December game. Because one guy was hurt, you decided to alter three fifths of your line. Zim or Rick or whomever did did this, or I'm sure it was a multiple group. Uh, inst- now I'm not a Rashad Hill fan, all right, but Rashad Hill started five games, and you clearly considered him good enough to start five games. So Darisaw is out again now, this time with an ankle sprain, I believe. And instead of saying, "Okay, Rashad Hill's, you know, no great shakes," but we'll put him back in because we've taken poor Oli Udo and moved him from tackle to guard where he's struggling. No surprise. Um, But, but we should probably leave him there at the very least. And then Mason Cole, who is subbed in for Bradbury at center has done a nice job. Like I think he's done a solid job. So instead of saying we will take uh, with one piece out, we'll we'll put one piece in and it's not ideal, but we'll get by. Against the Detroit Lions, you said we are going to have to alter three fifths of our offensive line, and <laughs> and of course it? you set including everyone... the, the guy who gives the ball to Kirk through his legs, yes. like yes, and most... Bradbury. Like last time I checked, he's still not good, and and poor poor Oli Udo doesn't get moved to right tackle; he gets moved to left tackle. I know he's a tackle by trade, but that's an enormous ask. That's a very tough position, and it failed miserably. I'm shocked. Mm. I'm shot. What are you all thinking? Like, that's a fireable offense right there to be that short sighted. Like, if you came to me and said, I'm thinking about changing three fifths of the line, I'd be like, what? Don't do that. I will say, according to Pro Football Focus, this was one of the best games of Garrett Bradbury's career. I he had a 77 and a half grade out of 100. And I. Honest to God, I think this might be like one of the three best games of his I entire career. I still don't care. But Ole Udo was a struggle bus at left tackle. Yeah. But they just don't. But it's cohesiveness. You know, Again, it's not one guy. This is I five agree. guys moving as a unit in unison. <laughs> and you're changing three of them into different yeah. spots or just bringing guys off the bench. Yeah, no, I know it's it's not that shocking that they've struggled so much to put points on the board in the first half, right? So you got, you know, th- three guys. A quarterback that likes things very particular. Three guys, you know, sort of coming in. Not new spots for, like, Gary Bradbury's a center. But he hadn't played in a month. So, all right. Um, statement from me here. Dan Campbell's grapefruits might be too big for his own good. I know they won the game. But fourth and one. So, vi- the Vikings are down by two. There's what? Like, four minutes left in the game. And the Lions are facing a fourth and one yes. from Vikings field goal range. At their own 31-yard line. And Dan Campbell says, uh-uh, boys. We're going to get this yard. And But even getting that yard didn't guarantee a win because they still probably needed, like, one or two more first downs. And he says, no, we're going to line up straight up, and we're going to jam the football forward for a yard. And it's funny because the Vikings have 
seven or eight spots you could pick on right now defensively. Dalvin Tomlinson, Michael Pierce, and I can't remember. Tomlinson got hurt, so I'm trying to remember if if those. So I think those guys were both in the game for that okay. snap. Yeah, I don't and they know. they literally like pick the two guys that you don't want to challenge in that spot defensively, and they went right at them. Uh, but somehow, I mean, this was a game of hot potato, man. Like, I don't want, I don't want to win. You, you take it. I don't want to win. You take it. So the Vikings, you know, the Vikings got. I thought, I thought the Vikings were going to go unpunished for that just terrible football game they play. But ultimately, you know, they got beat. But Dan Campbell's grapefruits almost prevented that win from happening. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I respected it. You're you're on eleven. Like, I go for it. I'm fine with it. I I loved it. But I it's loved like the call. if you, but if you don't get it. And I, get, I know that what I'm about to say was proven wrong, but like if you don't get it, the game is over the other way. Mm-hmm. But of course, it wasn't over because, you know, the, the Vikings it. are the Vikings and the Lions are the Lions and whatever. Campbell going for it, John Harbaugh and the Ravens going for the win, going for the jugular yesterday. I love that. I, That's I love a the little fourth different. down calls. I think the ball. I love more, it. I just love it. The more Ravens fourth down conversions. Than Dan Campbell. Make- Make NFL football well, like Madden, okay? But that that's second one they I'm passed. At. It's getting but, closer. But that second one he passed on, and of course, Goff, as Goff does, freaked out and lost the ball. Mm. Like, what are you doing? The Lions to... quarterback? I'm... Yes, Jared Goff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not Declan Goff. Not me. But like, I'm sorry, what are you I was doing? Wrong. They, no, that, uh, it was the it was one. third down that they ran right yeah. at but Pierce. But you're talking about the first Thompson. one, I, I thought, too. The, the first fourth down. He ran and didn't get it. The second one, yes. he went for it I'm again. I'm mixing up, yeah. <laughs> in his own territory. But he had Goff drop back to throw a pass. And, of course, Jared Goff completely freaked out. Yeah, <laughs> just panicking. It's still, yeah. Oh, my God. All right. John Harbaugh, I'm with Dex. Yeah, go John Harbaugh. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I have a Minnesota Wild statement. I will say the Minnesota Wild are legit and the numbers back it up. So I'm going to show you a little uh, little graph here from my dude, Jay Fresh Hockey. He does a great job of hockey analytics. He kind of takes a bunch of statistics, a bunch of traditional stats, a bunch of analytical stats, combines them to a composite score, and ranks the NHL teams 1 through 31. So we'll scroll up here for the visual audience. The Wild rank in the league right now, number three. But they're the third best team in the league, given their statistics from traditional goals to goaltending and power play to also analytics for goal four percentage, goaling allow percentage. So the, the the interesting thing about some of these graphs is you'll see some red on here, again, for the YouTube and visualize, and I'll explain for the audio audience, that they're red, the place where they're, unsu- they're not successful, is their power play. Their power play is one of the worst in the league. They're 28%. But they're five on five, and when they're not playing on the power play, they're scoring goals the best rate in the NHL. They've actually scored the most goals in the entire NHL this season, and they rank number three in the NHL in that statistic. They also are finishing in front of the net at, at a high rate. Only one other team has a better finishing rate than the Wild, meaning they're converting high danger chances, they're putting themselves in good position, and that's a good thing. Now, their goaltending has gotten better. Their goaltending ranks 22nd right now out of 31 teams. I will say that number was even lower a couple weeks back, but Cam Talbot and Capo Kakinen have looked a lot better over the course of the last few weeks. And the other statistics that kind of offset that is you see goals allowed for percentage, that XGA, which says number three. That means the defense is putting the goaltender in good positions and not hanging them out to dry, so it kind of evens things out where Cam Talbot could be a little bit better, but the circumstances in front of Cam Talbot have put the defense and the Wild in good position uh, to not give up bad goals. So the things that they're worst at are power play and goaltending. Yeah. So if they clean those things up, even a little bit, not like top five in the league, but Correct. if they clean those things up even a little bit, then like they could legitimately be the best team in the NHL. And I, I would say the goaltending is the thing that they – Definitely need to improve still and, and be consistent at. Like the if you whisper, it was on that. Uh, you, were, whisper, whisper, whisper. you were a week and a half ago. He yeah. was. The whisper was uh, I like all over that whisper. one. Yeah, yeah, but the, if if the power play can get a little bit better, but the goaltending can at the very worst be league average, I think this team's going to legitimately make a run. I do. They're projected both, to get 110 points right now by the regular season's end. Both of those things though need need to come up significantly for a playoff run. You, yeah, you, I mean, because you're not you going to fudge that right now. You can't fudge that come the spring. Yeah, Those are, so, that's true. true. I feel like the power, if, if you're that good five on five, I feel like the power yes. play and in overtime, like I feel like the power play percentage is going to just sort of straighten itself out to some extent. I would but that's just true. the hockey whisper. That's no, I think that, no, the, 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 we whisper, got comments yesterday. They want the more of the whisper. 
the whisperer is like always like sort of defensive and like i think we buy into him all the time like like mm-hmm. like he's like well i just said this but and we're like no whisper you go whisper like we're empowering the, the, whisper the whisper is a little insecure it's, yeah, been, it's, yeah. it's, been, it's been a few years since you know, it's been a few takes. years since he's been on the circuit right? as, I mean, as I my therapist yeah as my therapist says you know you don't have the need to defend yourself if you're if you got a conviction you you don't have to defend it can like, you send the whisperer the name of yes, your therapist please? yes i can i can <laughs> All right, Judd. <laughs> statement. Mike the therapist. Okay. Uh, my statement is this. It's about time. Just a quick shout out. Congratulations. Tony Oliva and Jim Cott, both on Sunday, get into the Baseball Hall of Fame as elected by something called the Golden Days Era Committee. Carew and, and a bunch of uh, ex-players, greats. We're on that. But congratulations, Tonio. I believe 83 now. Uh, this is fantastic. This is absolutely great. And and it's yep. been a long time. Uh, he is, as, as Phil knows as well, a complete class act, a great guy. But more importantly, in his prime, a great player. So congratulations to both. I think Tony awesome. Oliva, I think Oliva in particular is a prime example of I would rather, for Hall of Fame purposes, give me give me seven or eight great peak years over, like, and Jim Cott's probably in the second category, which is, like, 20 really good years. Yep. You know, I could listen to cases for both, but that's why I've been so mad about Johan Santana. Johan Santana didn't even reach, like, the minimum threshold of votes to continue on the ballot because, well, he got hurt and it was so short. It's like, no, Johan Santana and Tony Oliva were – considered among the best of the best of their era for like seven or eight years and then both fell victim to injuries and but if a guy was that great from age 23 or 24 until he was 30 or 31 winning Cy Young awards and batting titles and putting up ridiculous numbers what do you care if he got hurt when he was 31 and didn't didn't complete the rest of his 30s I'm with you on this yeah you know peak greatness yep I agree completely so yeah long time overdue for both those guys, especially Tony Oliva, who I think just people were just like, well, he got injured. Well, he got injured. Okay, but he was, re- you know, if, if you're a young listener or, or viewer of the YouTube channel, just go to Baseball Reference and look at Tony Oliva before he got hurt. Yep. Just ridiculous numbers and was helping drive those great Twins teams of the 60s. So, mm-hmm. um, all right, I'll give you, I'll give you uh, one more here. Write this down. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It's all wrapped in one. It's a statement and a write that down. Jax? Um, yeah. I floated this on Ventline yesterday. But I want to be I want to be early on this too, because we only on have the like three days runway. Yep. On the record here. The Vikings are going to bounce back and <laughs> beat the Steelers on Thursday night. All right. Yeah. all right. I know that I said it on Ventline, but I just want to make sure this is ironclad again because I gave you the Lions one last week. I'm feeling cocky is what And everyone doing. thinks like, oh, this is the end. No, no, no. The Vikings yep. love to perk up and show pride. The Steelers have an old quarterback. They just got done with a black and blue game against the Ravens. They're coming off an emotional high, and that bubble will be popped by the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> the Vikings will beat the Steelers on Thursday night. A statement and a write that down all wrapped into one here. Book it. I believe the kids call this feeling themselves <laughs> this is a heat check right here bill is feeling himself <laughs> when it comes to predictions i mean at this point i can't see the vikings just completely rolling over i do think there's enough good players I, you know they're going to get some guys back they're from injury some, at yeah. some point like Darius is going to come back. We're gonna get some guys back yes yep you're right and uh i i'm i'm still absolutely perplexed as to why they decided to let jared goff one for eight for six yards and three sacks under pressure just sit back there so i think i think zimmer's gonna like snap out of it a little bit yeah. against the steelers and yeah but i mean mike you know it's not that hard to say mike has lost his coaching fastball like what made mike good yeah is now not there yep which is defense Who is the right? la- i mean he's never yes, been the best I mean, leader he's never like connected with his players very well but- it's like Who's the last cornerback he developed? Because for a long time, he did a really good job there. Like, yeah. like who? Yeah, I mean, Dancer's been passable, but like... Yeah, but like, you know. that last play yesterday, there's no way... <laughs> play as far off the guy as possible. And then yeah. we'll see what happens. So I yeah. just, yeah, I think Mike's lost his fastball. I think it happens to people. Yeah. All right, Dex, final statement. 
I'm uh, I'm ready for this football season to be over. That's just my final statement. Declan's I'm, a I'm, 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 right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm frozen. I, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I I'm just I'm, like, I'm lost in. for words. Uh, I, I'm just I'm I'm locked in, and I'm locked in, and I'm really? looking at I'm looking at the 2022 draft. I'm thinking of days of Kellen Moore leading this Vikings football team. It's uh, God, you where I'm at hair. right now. Declan, your I do have nice. I, like, I actually right I have to now, get that picture. Yeah. Look, looks like like a shot that I that I would send to Fox to get you on a show. I am getting my ID uh, renewed today, so this will be my ID photo. This oh, will just be this one. I'll just right give here. them this. I'm sure the DMV will love that. I love it. So you know what, Phil? I if we if we we were, for instance, to reboot Melrose Place, would Declan not fit in perfectly? Like if we were to do a two, yeah, he'd be uh, Andrew. Uh, what's his name? Chu. Uh, Andrew Chu. Yeah, Andrew Chu. That guy. I, yeah. Great hair, Dex. Thank you. It's a great '90s show. I don't know what that show is. Melrose Place. It was oh, Melrose you don't know Place and nine hundred two one zero. Oh, go before Declan's it. time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, uh, no. But I mean, he. I think he'd like it. Go binge it. Okay. Binge it. There's like seven seasons, aren't there? Probably yeah, Dex. Kid, I'll, I'll I'll do that for you. I'll, do, I'll get right on that <laughs> one for kids you. Love the binge stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh Don, Don watched it all. Didn't binge it for us so. though. All right. That's a wrap on Mackie and Judd, right. Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment Complaining Therapy. Let's put let's put Stoic Declan full screen there here. There go. it is. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, if you missed Ventline yesterday, go check it out. It's the second most listened to episode so far this season. You want some therapy. And that's uh, Stoic Declan taking us home here.